Hey, at least the sun visors have mirrors in them. You didn't cheapen out there, just everywhere else. Another Sunday rolls around, another car to look at. The uh, rather bland Mondeo. Well, you know, we kind of have good cars all the time. This rather dull and bland looking creation is the Mondeo Mark IV. According to Wikipedia, it got its name from the Latin mundus, which means world. But I think it got its name from the word mundane. This particular Mondeo is exceptionally mediocre because it's the ZTEC, which is in the middle of the range. On the plus side, it does have cruise control, aircon, and a six-speed manual gearbox, which is not too bad. The 2.0-litre TDCI four-cylinder diesel engine generates about 140 horsepower, so it's about average. It's maybe a little bit more clattery than average. That's the only exciting thing I can say about it. Look, its capacity is reasonable for a hatchback. The lack of a 12-volt socket is kind of bothersome, but this is a ZTEC model. It's not exactly top of the range. But what do we have under here? Oh, space saver. At least it's not a tire inflation kit. These door cards are very plain and not particularly special. Yes, you do get a door pocket. The speaker looks like it's a bit on the small side. There's no multicolored sections here or slightly different tones going on. It's all very bland and samey. I suppose at least you get the uh, door handles there in a chromey silver. The trouble is it's just the right shade to be tacky. Not ideal. I don't necessarily think the electric window placement is a good thing. Anyways, on to the interior itself. Well, the legroom's pretty good, but I mean, for the size of this car, you'd expect it to be. Obviously, these aren't the uh, standard seats as such. They do have leather covers over the top. I mean, it's in use in a taxi trade. You're not gonna have the cloth interior. Oh, did I mention leather interior for these is absurdly expensive? Well, I've mentioned it now. There is actually an armrest under there, but obviously you can't access it right now. It's not particularly special. What do we have down here? Well, we have an interesting place 12 volt socket and a little cubby hole, which you could call an ashtray. Let's move on to the front segment. So you have this nice finish here, which isn't present on the rear door cards. Don't know why. The switches actually look pretty good, but it's got again that just slightly wrong shade of silver that looks really tacky. This area down here, I cannot stress enough how good a size this is and how utterly practical it is. Now, moving on to the uh, seats themselves. There are partial electrics. It goes up and down on electrics and the rest is manual, which is interesting. Let's talk about Ford's design choice on the interior of this. It's really quite strange and I don't think it carries over very well. So you get circular vents. You get tiny little switch in here for the lights. Bearing in mind the rest of the dash is quite big and chunky with giant buttons. You know, anything square is enormous and anything round is really, really small like this. Why? This dash style has no consistency. Considering it's a gigantic chunky car, you'd think the dials would be gigantic too, but no, just the buttons are. It just doesn't feel right. Even the stalks are enormous. You can see that one there and this one over this side, they're huge. But yet the round dials are small. This detestable kind of tacky silver, very tacky shade of silver here is present all across the steering wheel to remind you that it's a cheap car. And look at this on the dashboard, right? It's just overkill. It's too much silver in one place. And then the rest of the dash is a really weird shade of boring, dark, very dark gray, maybe, what would you call it? Again, just the design philosophy baffles me. Oh, and for a gigantic car, this tiny little gear stick feels again a bit out of place. You'd think it'd be something chunky, a bit more oversized. Again, it just seems strange when you're driving it. Since we're done with the gripes of design philosophy, the uh, clocks are actually pretty good. I was happy with them. Maybe the speedo's a bit weird. It doesn't seem quite right. The graduation seems a bit off, but otherwise, I mean, it's absolutely fine. 
On the center of the dash here, we have the rather disgusting 6000 CD unit. Ford stereos are always bad. They always ask for codes. They always ask for other random stuff that's really annoying. The other thing I can't stand about the stereo units is the fact that their Bluetooth setup is needlessly overcomplicated. It doesn't need to be this way, Ford. I mean, hopefully in the newer cars you fix this. I haven't driven any new Fords, mainly because I'm so disgusted by the older ones. Climate control unit is, you get used to it, but initially it's always that, where do I find this button? It's just not intuitive at all. As mentioned, this car has the Bluetooth, but I've added this extra Bluetooth module in here for my other car. And I've done this because the stereo Bluetooth is so overly complicated that even with three tutorial videos, I still can't get it to work. I don't know why, maybe it's just that the uh, stereo doesn't have any more memory left on it, but I've tried clearing it. It's all just plain weird. I don't understand it. It really gets on my nerves. And yeah, that's why I fitted this. Storage areas are good. They're perfect for us in the taxi trade anyway, so I can't really complain about that too much. Like I mentioned earlier, the gear stick is, it looks quite premium, but it looks like it'd be at home in a smaller, less chunky car. It just seems like a very weird design choice. Moving back the way, you've got the usual two cup holders, a handbrake, and a little storage container, which is quite deep. And has a secondary segment. So for a gigantic, oversized car, does it have a good sized glove box? Well, no. The glove box is tiny. And obviously a taxi driver is full of crap. You, you get the idea. Hey, mirror's really small, but what can you do about that? These roof lights are horrible. Again, they don't suit the design philosophy of the car whatsoever. They're tiny and they're not very good. So yeah, that's the thing. And behind it, the sunglasses holder that maybe some people use, but I've certainly never seen anybody use it. You know, one thing that upsets me greatly about these, yeah, getting in and out is pretty easy, but why would you want to? This seat suffers from the same problem that the Ford Focus has. It's really uncomfortable. And you could fiddle around with the lumbar support on the side all day, and it's not gonna make it any better. This section here up the top sticks out way too far. Even when you crank the lumbar support up, all it does is give me back pain. It's just no good at all. Well, I guess we better do a road test, shall we? Things always sound very clattery when they fire up. <laughs> Typical Fords, I guess. But then again, I'm biased. I never liked Fords much. I'm sure you'll give me a ragging in the comments if you're a Ford lover. Anyway, <laughs> let's get out there on the road. But anyway, unlike most European diesels, the clutch isn't very forgiving on this. It's, it reacts a bit like a petrol. If you clutch up straight away, you're going to stall. And it takes a bit of getting used to, but I guess if you're going from unleaded vehicles to this, it's not gonna be that much of a big deal, but it certainly keeps surprising me. And um, that's kind of annoying. Also, I never know exactly how much throttle to put down. I guess I never get better at it as I go along. The next thing to note is the fact that the turbo lag is absolutely horrendous in this. You'd be able to much more effectively put down the power if it wasn't for that turbo lag. And again, I was suppose it's something you would get used to over time, but it's just annoying. You know, Volkswagens don't suffer from this problem. And you know, driving stuff like this gets me to appreciate Volkswagens more because of how good they are. Now, in terms of road engine and wind noise, they're not excessive in this, but they're a little bit more than I would have hoped for considering how big it is and how much padding the interior has. It's kind of disappointing. So what's the verdict? Well, Monday was a little bit mediocre, but I guess that's what Ford excel at in most cases. Uh, well, not counting the obviously Cosworths and RSs and stuff like that, but the regular cars just leave something to be desired. Yeah, it's got a fair amount of luggage space. Yeah, it's got a fair amount of legroom, but those seats aren't that comfortable. It doesn't make up for it. In terms of uh, mile per gallon and things like that, yeah, they're, they're pretty good, but um, there's better things you could be driving. 
That's the way I look at it. So yeah, I don't know if you're in the market for a, a hatch or an estate. Maybe there's other things in the market you should be considering before you resort to one of these. <clears throat> well, I'm glad that's over with. And if you look up on the screen just now, you'll see two cars I had better things to say about. Put it that way. And anyway, never mind, hopefully you enjoyed my rather, uh, what would I call it? Cynical take on Mondeo. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out some of my other stuff. I do much more exciting cars, I promise. Uh, have a little look at some of our back catalog if you've never seen it before. And uh, if not, check out some of our newer stuff that's coming up soon. My next one's going to be a bit boring too, but the one after that should be a bit more fun. Okay, till next time, look after yourselves.